Hi, Prime Minister. <laughs> yes, you know I'll do anything for you, big dog. BBC Breakfast News. Mm, can't Michael Fabricant do it? I'm busy. <sighs> okay, but you'll have to make it up to me. <laughs> what shall I wear? Hello? Hello? Thank you for joining us. Nadine Dorries, Minister for Digital Media, Culture and Sport. Yeah, so you better watch out. <laughs> Have you spoken to the Prime Minister in the past 24 hours? What a weird question. Like, why? You're prying into my personal life, and that's very unprofessional, actually. Charlie, so why are you asking me that? Is that a difficult question? I'm just asking if you've spoken to the Prime Minister in the past 24 hours. I know, and you shouldn't ask personal questions, and anyway, I've already answered your question. No, you haven't. Have you spoken to the Prime Minister in the past 24 hours? Mm. That's right. right, well, it seems to me like you wish you could speak to the Prime Minister, the actual Prime Minister. Um, he's a really good Prime Minister, and he must be because he picked me a published author to be on his front bench. And you're just jealous because I spoke to him this morning, literally spoke to him on the phone, the actual Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. And he said, hi, Nadine, because he knows my name. And you know whose name he doesn't know? Yours. So speaks to me and he thinks about me all the time and he never thinks about you Charlie so you're obviously jealous which is painfully obvious next question what's his mood um he's really positive like onwards and upwards um Geronimo it's his favorite saying and he said it last night or has he changed changed what his Bitch. attitude his but what he sent a letter to backbench MPs that his approach sent a letter to who and what did it say who did he send it to? Who has he been talking to? Is it Kate Griffiths? Has he been talking to Kate Griffiths? Because I swear that backbench cow better back off. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, Rishi Sunak is a two-faced snake and the Prime Minister tells the truth. And the Labour front bench are all gapped off their nuts and their pedos. Nadine Dorries, thank you. Tick tock, BBC, or ass is grass. Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries, off of the government, and this is an extract from my new tale of eroticism and drama, His Front Bench Woman. Any resemblances to men, women, dead living is purely coincidental. Chapter 3, PMQs. Glass ceiling smasher Naomi Forrest slid into the House of Commons, and as always, every male eye was on her. Women hated her and men loved her, but secretly because of the women. She poured her fabulous curves into the front bench, where she was Minister for Fashion and Classiness, and awaited the arrival of the Prime Minister like everybody else, apart from the drug heads of Labour and the nationalistics of the SNP and the four Lib Dems and the Green Lady and most of the Conservative backbench. In he strode, his shock of pale golden hair so similar to her own. Nobody knows that just last night I had a bird's eye view of that head, delicious Naomi, in her mind not out loud. She sexily recalled how a flash of his glorious pink scalp had briefly glinted in the candle night of her luscious bedroom. Lord Fear Karma, the dreadful leader of the opposition, stood and whined his first question. Would you kick a dog, Prime Minister? The Labour Party roared with approval like a crowd. I'd like to tell the Right Honourable Gentleman that I would never kick a dog, unlike you, Captain Dogshite. Hit back the Prime Minister, leaving former QC Lord Karma totally flustered and dropping his notes like a dick. Naomi felt a quiver in her cervical region at this victory. Just then, Naomi sensed cronish disapproval behind her and turned to see former Prime Minister Tarina Dune staring daggers at her. Tarina had recently become a hero to the centrists by dragging the Prime Minister on live TV, but now she was seething. Naomi hissed at Tarina, but Tarina couldn't hiss back because she was wearing a mask. Naomi had just covered Tarina in Covid and it felt fantastic. Turning back, Naomi caught the Prime Minister's eye and he winked at her erotically. She was his front bench woman and she couldn't wait to welcome him into her rear office later. Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries, Digital Minister for Sport and Culture and Fiction. Here is another extract from my erotic political page turner, his front bench woman, now available for 99p in the works. Chapter 6 up the blues. Naomi Forrest, the lioness front bencher, sat lasciviously in the Prime Minister's office in a chair. He was behind his desk, also sitting in a different chair. The electricity between them was palpable. Well, Naomi, his voice was deep with yearning and respect. 
Could you handle a whole football team? Naomi's cheeks would have flushed if she got stressed, but she never did. This was just another day at the office for her, a seasoned professional who had a body made for sex and a brain made for business, and also sex. You know that won't be a problem, Prime Minister. She smiled. Then the Prime Minister smiled. They were smiling at each other. Naomi hadn't run a football club before, but it couldn't have been too difficult. After all, she was the sort of woman who kept the Prime Minister happy 24-7, while also getting a 100% majority in her constituency and writing up to eight books a year. You've always been very goal oriented Minister, the PM winked. Girls were what the players scored during football games, and Naomi sure did intend to score big. Are you a player, Prime Minister? She winked after saying this, so he would know what she was getting at. Luckily, as the greatest leader ever, even better than Churchill, because he hadn't been voted out yet, he knew straight away. First things first, she leaned forward to show off a rift of cleavage that made him move in his chair and the chair creaked a bit because it was luxurious leather. Take me to Abramovich's seized football manager yacht. They flew the PM's private plane to the yacht, which was moored on the Thames. Something about private jet flights made Naomi up for it like a dirty little rabbit. No wonder Liz Truss loves being on this thing, she thought. She turned to her fluffy-haired boss. Come here, Prime Minister. I'm going to show you why I'm the MP for Mid-Bedfordshire. And they explored each other's bodies while laughing again and again. Hello, I'm Nadine Dorries, the Minister for Digital Computers and Cultural Sport. Here's another extract from his front bench woman, my erotic political thriller now available from a massive box in my conservatory. And remember... You can't spell conservatory without Tory. Chapter 9, The Algorithm Method. Fierce front bench filly Naomi Forrest was meeting the head of Massive Hard, the main computer company of the world. Hi, girl Bates, purred Naomi, noticing his nerdish eyes practically dribbling at the sight of her parliamentary curves. I've got one question for you. When are you going to get rid of the algorithms? Gill adjusted his glasses hurriedly because they'd tilted off to the side a bit. He wasn't used to politicians looking ravishing. They normally looked like men or sometimes a non-sexy woman. Oh, er, he gibbered. Well, Naomi put her hands on her hips. The head of Massive Hard was all of a dither. Just then, lights began flashing red and alarms sounded like in a film when there's a crisis on a big boat. Oh, no, squealed Gil Bates. Their computers have gone berserk. Naomi kept her cool as per. Don't get your langer in a twist, Bates. Show me to the main computer around here. I'm the digital minister for England, after all. Gil Bates hastily showed her to the main computer of Massive Heart. It was as big as a living room in an 80s terrace, probably, and had a keyboard and a mouse and a screen. Naomi typed on the keyboard in computer language. Please, Naomi Forrest, you're the only one who can help. Gil Bates was rolling around on the floor like a ball. Just as I thought, try Naomi. This whole damn thing is jam-packed with algorithms. I've been saying for years we needed to get rid of them. You did, Naomi. You were right all along. Gil whimperingly agreed. Naomi took the main computer's mouse and clicked on all the algorithms, one after the other. See you in hell, algorithms, she gravitased. And click! She blasted the last algorithm out of existence. The alarms and the flashing red lights calmed down and stopped and turned off. Well, Naomi, you saved the day. Gil was amazed. Could I show you my appreciation of dinner? Naomi could see his corduroys straining at the front. No thanks, Bates. I have to get back to my second home. The Houses of Parliament. And she left. It was actually Naomi's third home, though. Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries, your one-stop parliamentary shop for all things cultural. Here's another chapter from my erotic political thriller, His Front Bench Woman. Recent reviews include Fine for the Beach, Bought This by Accident for My Wife, and For Christ's Sakes, Nadine, I Don't Want to Read This, Please Stop Asking Me, and that is from a Mr. Damien Green. Chapter 12 Channel 4. Naomi Forrest, the artistic secretary for the arts, strode into the headquarters of leftist woke Channel 4. The front doors were made of hemp and she rolled her eyes before flinging them open, the doors, with her elegant and also alluring hands. She took out her mobile and called her favourite number. Prime Minister Chow, she purred as she glided down the corridors of the UK's premier channel for cancel culture. I'm in the building. These television execs are going to be wetting themselves with urine. The Prime Minister laughed with respect 
respect and arousal. Naomi arrived at the channel's main boardroom and walked in, and all the lefty men in the room looked at her. She could practically hear their pathetic langers getting slimed up. Well, fellas, she said, slamming her two hands down on the long boardroom table that looked like that one off of network. Enough's enough. You've been getting away with this crap for too long. There was a collective gasp in the room. The gentlemen of Channel Bore were all weak men, so also in the room were some women in TV jobs, and they had blue hair, and they were unattractive, and they were jealous of Naomi. Miss Forrest, spluttered the CEO of Channel Bore, but Naomi didn't let him get a word in. She sat in his seat and put her immaculate heeled feet on the table. Her shoes cost £300 from Selfridges. You've had far too much public money, Channel Bore, and all you've used it for is making shows about gays and also doing news that is rude about me, the government. This ends now. But, 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 the CEO said, now sitting on the floor eating a vegan yoghurt made of fake milk. We haven't had any public money. You know I physically don't understand any of that damn stuff. Naomi hit back brilliantly. And what's more, I don't need to. I'm a front bench woman and I'm selling Channel Board to a proper broadcaster, whatever that is. From now on it'll be nothing but free speech erotic programming, starting with a 30 part adaptation of one of my 16 novels. And with that she took her legs down from the table and stood up on her shoes and kicked the vegan yogurt out of the bearded CEO's hands. Just another day saving culture for this front bench woman. Hi, I'm Nadine Durries, the girl boss in chief, here with another chapter from his front bench woman, which is flying off shelves in bookshops everywhere, just not the one in your town, so stop tweeting me to say that there's plenty available in my one in my town, Nadine, because I'll just block you. Chapter 14, let him eat cake. The prime minister, normally so strong and powerful and virile, was slumped and bulbous. His silken mop, ordinarily so lion-esque, was now dishevelled like a stray dog from one of those videos on YouTube. Red hot minister for stardom, Naomi Forrest, yearned to amorously show the PM he was still her king of England. Across the house on the Labour benches, Lord Fear Karma, the so-called leader of the opposition, was honking his hatred of Britain. While people died, he partied, he broke the law and that's called a crime. This was met with roars of approval from those on those benches, especially Emery Borbury, who once laughed at a bunch of flags destroying this nation. Naomi closed her eyes and wobbly lines appeared like in a film when there's a flashback and then she had a flashback to the Prime Minister's birthday. The sky was blue like a Thatcher suit and the downy Street staff were gathered, excited to pleasure their dear leader on this day of his birth. The Hark's immense cake with its Union Jack icing glistened. Plastic cups of mid-range Prosecco, no better than they drink on a council estate, were all around. Bitchy Cognac, the treacherous Chancellor, was there, langering on about how great America is. If it's so great, Naomi bit back, why don't you just become a citizen? Checkmate, hun, I already am, he smirked. Wow, what a fanny, Naomi thought, truthfully. Then the Prime Minister walked in and everybody sang the famous song, Happy Birthday. Thank you, he gratituded, winking at Naomi briefly, which made her thighs stand on end. He stayed for precisely ten seconds before getting back to work. Flashback over, Naomi opened her eyes and whispered, Your front bench woman believes in you, my prince. Just loud enough for him to hear, but not loudly enough for that pure snake emoji Triz Lust to get near Phil and snide about it on WhatsApp, the cow. The Prime Minister heard Naomi, smiled, grew strong and rose to, yet again, give his superb, believable reproduction apology. With his front bench woman at his side, this People's Prime Minister was going absolutely nowhere. Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries, the Cultural Minister for Exercising Your Sports. Look at the Secretary of State of that. I've written 16 novels, but I don't let that get in the way of all the activities like sports and culture and music that we have drinking, that we have here in Britain. Today I am going on a trip somewhere very special indeed. Won't you come with me? Wow, here I am in the internet. And as you can see, it's the British internet. You're welcome, United Britain. It's so safe here, thanks to me. It is the safest internet in the world. Luckily, with me at the helm, we can take down the algorithms. The internet is a great place that you can book a place at your local football court and just kick around the b-ball and have fun and feel great in your communities. Last one down the football pitch is a rotten tennis bat. I'm Nadine Dorries, the sporty minister with a head for books and a mouth for reading. Here's another chapter from his front bench woman, which can be downstreamed from any reputable bookseller. Chapter 15, Basic Instincts. Sir Thea Karma, leader of the opposition, looked at his notes. Can the Prime Minister explain why 56 members of his party are under investigation for sexual misconduct? Yarnsville, thought Naomi wittily. The Prime Minister just shook his head. 56 out of 365 MPs? That's like 15% of my MPs. It's nothing. 
saying, if it was the Labour Party, it would be 56 MPs, and that's 28%, nearly a third. Disgusting. And we'd still be in lockdown. The People's Conservative Party showed their loudly dignified approval to the Prime Minister's excellent words. It was totally organic, too, and they had in no way been briefed to be vociferously enthusiastic today. Seeing that the PM was as unflappable as ever, Minister for Good Times Naomi Forrest oozed with pride. Just then, across the chamber, Agatha Boehner, the deputy leader of the opposition, crudely waved to get the Prime Minister's attention. Agatha Boehner had three children, one of which she'd had at just 16. The Prime Minister had six plus children, which is the female equivalent of about one child. Plus, at least he was married when he had some of them. Naomi narrowed her eyes at the northern strumpet as she showed the Prime Minister her knees and a bit more of her legs. Those tights can't be more than 40 denier, Naomi hissed to the minister next to her. He didn't answer. Looking over, she noticed he was watching a pornographic film on his phone. Boys will be boys, Naomi said and chuckled. Meanwhile, Agatha was still trying to distract the PM with those damn state-educated legs. Not on my watch, heroined Naomi. She majestically marched to the dispatch box. Mr. Speaker, she purred, the speaker Leslie Soyle briefly startled by her timeless curves. This is highly irregular, said Leslie. Let it be known, Naomi began valiantly, that the left dishonourable lady over there, she pointed at Agatha, who adopted a butter-wouldn't-melt expression which angered Naomi because it bloody well would melt actually. She's deliberately trying to distract the Prime Minister by having a body. Naomi strode back to her seat. The sounds of disapproval from the opposition benches were like music to her ears. Agatha was suitably chastened. Thanks Naomi, that was a close call the Prime Minister whispered. All in a day's work, Naomi silkened. Only one front bench woman was allowed to distract the Prime Minister from his job. Boehner wouldn't try that again without a fight. Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries. Open the fridge. Whoa, what's that on the cheese? It's culture. Tomorrow sees the great nation of Britain heading to the polls to vote in the council elections. Now that's what I call council culture. As your minister for digital sports media and couture, I'm here to tell you you have one choice. Vote conservative. Here are the top three things your Conservative government has done for you. Number one, the bus pass. Yes, in 1973, your Prime Minister introduced free bus travel for olds. Travel for free and keep warm the fun way. You're welcome, United Britain elderlies. Number two, Brexit. Without the hard work of our Prime Minister, we wouldn't have the excellent thing that is Brexit. Brexcellent. Yes, without Brexit, there would be no vaccines. Over on Europea, they have no vaccines and everybody is also in lockdown. Here, we are all free and nobody has COVID. Also, without Brexit, the shelves in supermarkets would all be empty because that is life under communism, aka no Brexit. Luckily, our supermarket shelves are full of well-priced produce thanks to our dear leader, Prime Minister, and of course, Brexit. Number three, Food banks. Before this government came in in 2010, do you know how many food banks there were in the UK? Less than a hundred. Put it this way, babes and huns, there are currently more food banks in the UK than there are McDonald's's. That's right, in just 12 years, this government has made food banks go from under 100 to over 2,000. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, all the people who say this government doesn't care. So vote Conservative, because a vote for Labour is a vote for Keir Starmer, who it turns out was having a beer and a curry with a man who died in 2019. He did this when? In 2015. Yes, that's right. Just five years before a deadly pandemic came in, he was already flouting the rules. Vote conservatory. You conducted a privatisation consultation. It generated a very impressive 56,293 responses, uh, according to the white paper. What percentage of those supported privatisation? OK, so the figures you quote are actually based on something that I would describe as nefarious. So, mm. Yes, I got 56,000 respondents to my consultation on whether or not Channel 4 should be privatised. But what you don't realise is that 46,000 of those respondents, which is actually even more, came from a woke lefty lib crybaby snowflake organisation called 38 Degrees, who are jealous of me, a front bench woman. They're all virgins. And you know what they did? They rewrote the consultation to be different and bad and misleading, not like me, the original truth spitter. Also, I'd worked really hard on that consultation and I made it all good and they took it and changed it to make it so bad. Seriously, I'd done a really cool cover for it with word art that had this kind of like um, blue chrome effect on the text and I'd put some stickers on it too from Ms Magazine. So I think what they've done is very unfair. And Yes, that's quite a vulnerable issue, I think, for, for you since my colleague here had to explain that to you at the last session. 
Um, the answer to the question, of course, is that 96% opposed uh, privatisation. Yes, but if it wasn't for them, it would be 96% in favour of my thing that was the thing that I want to do with Channel 4. I mean, have you even seen their news shows? It's called Channel 4 News, and Jon Snow is always slagging me off to be edgy. Hey, Jon Snow, stick to Game of Thrones, mate, to be honest. And by the way, hun, the British people are all so important to me that I am proud to share my Netflix password with them. Enjoy. Enjoy everyone. My favourites are Ozark and the one where the ladies sell houses. Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries, the Minister for Safe Internets and Rapping. Here's another chapter from my erotic political thriller, His Front Bench Woman, now available for Game Boy Advance. Chapter 18, Confidence Artist. The treacherous trickle of no confidence letters on headed paper, which had the address for the Houses of Parliament at the top, kept trickling in. The curvaceous minister, Naomi Forrest, Glided, glided, glid? Sexily walked down the hall to the Prime Minister's office. Her hair, a constant platinum jubilee of its very own, was looking so nice. She walked into his office without knocking because she knew that would be fine. She put her hands on her wonderful hips and shook her head at the sight she was looking at. It was the Prime Minister behind his desk, head bowed, hair unusually all over the place. Oh, Naomi. He sounded so defeated for the first time ever, even though he'd actually lost loads of jobs in the past. I've just had another letter of no confidence. Can you believe it. No, Prime Minister, I can't believe it. What a load of bloody snakes. Naomi pounded her fist on the desk in a rage at whoever this absolute Judas was. Can you read it, Naomi? I just can't. The Prime Minister saddeningly passed Naomi the letter and she took it from him and looked at it and started reading it out loud. Dear Prime Minister, I think you are a bad Prime Minister and by the way, I am a mother actually from Anthea Headstrong. Naomi was furious and angry. This is just ridiculous, she outspoke. You have apologised fully and humbly and also you have changed the laws so that what you did in fact didn't break the Prime Ministerial Code. What more do they want? Don't worry, Prime Minister. It's just former Prime Minister Tarina June being a jealous cow as per the usual. She can't stand that you've absolutely smashed your premiership, so she's shit-stirring to make everyone have no confidence. I'm going to go on the world at one and stop this in its tracks. These politicians are all just playing politics. The Prime Minister wiped a tear away from his eye with a tissue he was holding in his hand. Thank you, Naomi. I'm so glad you are under me. Me too, Prime Minister. And they both shared a small laugh at the hilarious double entendre Naomi had noticed because she was under him as a minister, but also that sounded like sex. Sajid, hello, love. It's Nadine. Yes, I'm on top of the world. In fact, I have complete confidence. How are you going to vote tonight, hon? OK, well, good, because he has done a great job and he's looking better than ever. He looks delicious. Right decision, saggy boy. Hey, Wendy. I'm just calling to talk about the little vonk. <laughs> oh, God, who cares what Jesse Norman has to say? God, he didn't even put up a flag this weekend, twat. <laughs> anyway, I just want to give you some reasons to do the obvious and vote yes on our boy. Uh, so he got Brexit done. Um, he only presided over 170,000 deaths from COVID, so big decisions all correct. And um, uh, imperial measurements are good. And also two babies. Grey and bloody Brady, huh? No hard feelings, Gorge, but you're making a tit of yourself with this because my dear leader's going to win. Don't you like backing winners? Snake. Christian Wakeford. Hello, darling. It's Natty D. Yes, I wanted to talk to you ahead of tonight. Oh, yes, you're Labour now, aren't you? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Because you're so firmly right-wing. It's weird that they had you so willingly. All right, well, bye then. Can one of you update my fucking contact spreadsheet? Bridgie, Bridgie, Bridgie. Hello, Andrew. Seen you all over the news putting your letter in and taking it back out and then putting it back in again. Mmm, putting it back in. Did it feel good? Did it? Did it feel good putting it back in? We got Brexit done for you. We did it for you and this is how you repay us. You're disgusting. You're a dirty little langer. Who is Louis French? Has one of you made him up? Louis! Hello, you naughty little baby. How's it going in old um, Bexley and Sidcup? How are you going to vote? What? How dare you? You're nothing and you're nobody. I've never even heard of you. In, in fact, actually, I have heard of you, Louis Spence, and I've heard your shit. Yeah, I've heard that you're shit. You're just a load of shit. Hello? Hello? Oh, Jesus Christ. 
Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries, the Cabinet of Culture, and today I tweeted this good tweet. This gov will remain relentlessly focused and continue to deliver for people during a post-pandemic mid-war global cost of living challenge, which no Prime Minister or gov has faced the likes of since World War XI. People have suggested there is no such thing as World War XI. Well, that is just typical wokery-pokery, and actually there is 11 world wars, actually, and here they are. Listen and learn, it's culture time. World War One, the Great War, and it really was great. World War Two, the main one that we all love. The one with Hitler and Spitfires and all that lovely rationing, as well as the Blitz, which was, um, something to do with silk stockings. The famous war, Churchill's war. Churchill is a dog and a statue. World War Three. This was Vietnam, which was a movie war and a damn good one. World War IV, uh, the war that rhymes, which took place at Woodstock and Hendrix played, I think, and I should know because I am the culture secretary. World War V, the Cold War, so called because it happened in the winter. Brr. Mr Gorbachev, tear down that war! And the war was over because summer arrived. World War VI, this happened in the Falklands, which is a town in Argentina. I believe it was musically dramatised in the film West Side Story. No, that was something else. And World War Seven, that was West Side Story. World War Eight, oh, this one was a lot of fun. So basically, Sharon is married to Grant, but she starts having an affair with his brother Phil, and then Grant finds out. And well, I'll tell you something. It's like a modern day Tristan and Isolde. They were from Corrie, by the way. Just things I know as the Minister for Cultures. World War Nine, Margaret Thatcher versus treachery with a smile on its face. Yes, that's right, she fought against her party and her country for women everywhere, and that's why she's now known as the Queen of Hearts. World War X, Blur versus Oasis, and I actually prefer Cooler Shaker. World War XI, Ross and Rachel. Was it a break or not? I don't know, but it was a war. It was the 11th World War. And now we fight on with a Prime Minister who is loved by everybody except for jealous little snakes in the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats, who today took two seats away in two by-elections. Well, I hope it makes them very happy. Good God, Labour and Liberal Democrats, what a sad little life. What? Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries, famously the Minister for Digitals, Medias, Cultures and Sports, but I'm ready to be so much more. Boudicca, Margaret Thatcher, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth II. No, so many women before me have paved the way for the ultimate champion, a woman of politics. Yes, it's time for a new woman to say, all your base are belong to us, and that adult human female is me, Nadine Dorries, the mother of safe internets. People have suggested that my catchphrase be hashtag go nads, cause it's inspirational and it means that I am so great. But as a smart woman who is also a writer, I have gone with this. Learn it and run and tell that. Nadine, cultural learnings of England slash Britain for make benefit glorious nation of kingdom brackets united. What would I do as prime minister? Well, everything is already great already thanks to the amazing gentleman who led us through the pandemic and also World War XII, a hero. Thank you, prime minister. And so what I will do is just like more of that. Together as Prime Minister, you and me, we will make Britain the best it can be, aka what it has already stopped complaining. My main policies will be uh, one, more flags, two, no parodies of me allowed by law, three, the only books allowed in the British Library will be by top British authors such as Barbara Cartland, Geoffrey Archer, Mills, Boone, Willard Shakespeare, Stephen King and me, Nadine Dorries, his front bench woman, out now on Atari Jaguar. Where did you learn to fly? Yes, in just a few weeks, 200,000 Conservative Party members will be voting for your next Prime Minister. They're speaking for the entire country. <laughs> wow, that's one Conservative member per British death from COVID. You're welcome, Great Britain. Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries, former Secretary for Culture, ally to greatest Prime Minister of all time, Boris Johnson, and now former supporter of our current Prime Minister, Mary Elizabeth. Can't be trusted. She can't be trusted. Liz arrived on the scene as the hot new thing in politics, and that's why she was supported by people with their fingers on the pulse like me and Jacob Rees-Mogg. She inherited a perfect Britain with a safe internet, a Channel 4 on the verge of sale, and abolition of the communist BBC licence fee. And look at what she has done with it all! 
As you can see, I am too angry to even speak. In less than one month, she has seen to the death of our beloved Queen. Then after almost two weeks of grief, she has killed something else, the Conservative Party. And so now I, Nadine Dorries, author, Parliament woman and future Lord, am calling for a general election! One month ago, I was ecstatic and also extremely glad that 81,000 entire people voted Liz Truss to be the new leader of Britain, but now, due to me being loyal to my nation and also in a totally understandable panic about my future, I am doing a U-turn of my own, and now she's a snake emoji and the people must decide her fate. Truss and Quateng have gone in dry and are now destroying the greatest country on the planet that is called Earth. Stop them! The country needs to contract a disease this instant. It's called Called election fever. Don't let them take my peerage from me. Enough is enough, comrades. And also bills are too much or something. And remember, my erotic political thriller, His Front Bench Woman, is now available on audiobook, read by Bobby George. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me. No problem. It's for the country, aka Great Britain. Nice dress, BT dubs. Thank you. I saw it on Eva Braun and just had to have it. Drink? No thanks. Really? No, I'm joking. Half of hand sanitizer, please. Carex, if you've got it. Just a big slice of humble pie for me. I'm offering you an olive branch. Olives are a plant. They grow on trees. They're not even from jars. They're originally from a tree. And I didn't even need to know that as culture secretary. I just knew it anyway. Pretty cool move at the start of your premiership, getting that pesky queen out of the way so you could kick off with two weeks of enforced mourning before getting people to see what you're really like. Yep. You have been undermining me in the press when we have lost ground all over the UK, even in the sacred Red Wall, and that is a disgrace. Three things I know about the Red Wall, babe. They like fair wages, they like being able to eat meals, and they hate Channel 4. I'm queen of the woe karate now, hun. The reasonable centre is posting favourable memes of me. They're lapping me up and I'm loving it. We want Labour to lose. You might. I'm going to be a lord eventually, baby girl. A lord who writes a Laura Laura books. All I want is my spotless reputation intact. What can I do to win you round? I have a lot of empathy, Elizabeth. Some might say, too much. I care about people. And that's why the Conservative Party needs to wise up. You've got me calling for an election, Mikey Gove slagging off benefit cuts, and Michael Fabricant? No. He told the truth on Twitter. It's civil war, my sweet summer child, and I'm Berdicea. What can I do? Oh, Lizzie. Lizzie, Lizzie, Lizzie. I don't want to be tainted further by being seen with you, so I'll just say this. Never come up with a policy that you're not willing to U-turn on in 30 seconds flat. You feel the opinion poll slipping. Ooh, 30 points behind. Ciao, Bella. That means good luck, Bella. Bella's a magazine. I know about that. You'll regret being part of the anti-Grove Coalition, Dorries. Can I cancel that order of humble pie? It turns out I have no idea what it actually is. I'm so upset. I can hardly speak. I can't believe it. I can't believe he's gone. It's so upsetting to me. I hate the new Prime Minister. Okay, spirit world. Help me out. Well, oh, oh, what? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Oh, oh, whoa. Oh, no, I can't believe this. This is amazing. What? No way. Oh, election? Yes. Hi, I'm Nadine Dorries, prolific novelist and future lord. As it is this festive season, I want to bring you this, a new Christmas chapter for my erotic political thriller, His Front Bench Woman. Chapter 26, Deck the Halls, brackets, of Westminster. Well, Prime Minister, per parliamentary fox Naomi Forrest, what a year it has been. Naomi, we did it. The Prime Minister poured champagne that costs £80 per bottle and you can't get it in Tesco, just down the wine shop. First this year, you were Prime Minister, Naomi breathed. Then there was that lady nobody can remember the name of, and then there were 
two months when backstabber in chief Dishy Boobank falsed his way in. And now, finally, you are back where you belong, Prime Minister. And how we did it is not important, the Prime Minister said, gratefully passing Naomi a Sainsbury's Taste the Difference Florentine, which he had taken out of the packet and served upon a plate. Just then, there was an immature rap, rap, rap on the door of the room Naomi and the Prime Minister were perfectly happy in. Enter, said the Prime Minister. They shared a saucy giggle at the double entendre of the word enter. In walked Cassie Ribbons, the Prime Minister's ever so silly wife. Naomi didn't even care about her, to be perfectly honest. Room for a little one, she whined. God, desperate much. Without waiting for permission, Cassie just bloody walked in. She didn't even notice Naomi's content because she was so wrapped up in herself. Darling, she said to the Prime Minister, which was actually really patronising. He was Prime Minister for God's sake and for the second time, just like Churchill, the first Prime Minister ever. Can I open one of my prezzies a day early? It was Christmas Eve, by the way. Cassie, no presents until Christmas Day, the Prime Minister compromised. Yeah, respect Christ, Naomi said perfectly reasonably. At this, Cassie Ribbons ran from the room in tears like a mixture of Bambi on the ice and Bambi just after his mother was shot dead. Good, thought Naomi. She'll be gone for at least 45 minutes, crying as per the usual. The Prime Minister smiled and raised a glass of that champagne from earlier up in his hand. Naomi picked up her glass of the same champagne and touched it to the Prime Minister's glass of champagne and it made a clink sound. Yet again, she had been his front bench woman, faithful and true, and in 2023 she would be a lord and everything. Wow, she said. Everything's coming up, Naomi. Not quite everything, erotic the Prime Minister. And while Cassie sobbed downstairs in the Downing Street pantry, the Prime Minister pulled a cracker of his very own. It was Naomi. <laughs> yes, hello. It's me, Nadine Dorries, the greatest culture secretary of all time, actually, and author and also a lord now. I'm going to be a lord. Ooh, he's here again. The man with the child support in his eyes. I hope you're having a lovely um, New New Year's Eve, which is the 31st of December. Looking out on the morning rain. Oh. I used to feel uninspired. Cause you make me feel, you make me feel. Mm -hmm. Natural woman. Now I'm no longer doubtful of what I'm living for. I'm stuck. My dress is stuck to the rest of my dress. I don't need to do more. Cause you make me feel. Uh, baby, what you done to me? The greatest mistake in political history was made back in July 2022. That's right, the year before this one, 2023, when a number of backstabbing Conservative MPs, that is my party by the way, the one I'm in, got rid of the People's Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, when he was 60 points ahead in the polls. These MPs were jealous of his power, his magnetism and his winner in. And now look at the party. Disarray and also damage everywhere. There is no coming back for them and that is why it is time for me to step away and not be an MP anymore. Don't cry for me mid Bedfordshire. The truth is I've barely been there. And now I never will because I don't want to be part of a party that is definitely going to lose an election. Wow, there, I've said it out loud. Oh, look at that. Little crystal tears coming out of mine eyes. There's no going back now. 
Well, did you expect that? I bet you didn't. I bet you didn't expect that. Wasn't that so random? Anyway, after I'm no longer an MP, I will be a Lord. And that means I can do as little as I like. But fear don't, I will do loads, actually. Things like continuing to write lovely books where people have it off, presenting on the television, like now. Uh, I clearly have a gift for it. And also maybe voting in the Lords if it's something I'm interested in. I can't imagine what that would be. Privatising stuff, I reckon. Quite like doing that. Um, but you don't have to turn up to the Lords at all and I'll still get paid. I checked. Right, up next, my weekly interview with Boris Johnson. OK, I'm going to now read live this special chapter from his front bench woman. I've got it on my phone because it's just a note so far, but it's being published on Monday and you can buy it in the works for 99p. Chapter 36 of his front bench woman, Corona Nation. No, um, Coronation. It's just Coronet, Coronet, chapter 36, Coronation. The sun was shining so brightly and there wasn't a cloud in the sky and also there was no rain on this perfect day of days. Ah! Ard King Prince Charles as he woke up in his royal bedroom, which was decorated to a high standard with gold and marble and really nice wallpaper from John Lewis that was up to £40 a roll and you needed loads of it for King Prince Charles's bedroom because it was massive. It was the main bedroom in Buckingham Palace. Next to him was Camilla, the Queen. Um, queen consort? I don't know. I actually don't know what she is. But anyway, the actual queen said it was fine or something for her to be queen just before she died. Queen Elizabeth actually the very first queen ever. What a glass ceiling smasher for women. Camilla woke up then too. Morning, babe, she said and winked. He loved it. Part of what attracted him to her in the first place had been how she was always up for it. Are you excited? She purred like cats do, but with words. Can, he said. He shortened her name because he knew her so well. Not now. I have a coronation today to do. My one. Ha 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 ha. She cackled. I meant excited about the coronation. Now it was King Prince Charles's turn to cackle. They were both just cackling because it was so funny that he thought she meant something else. Sex, or at least hand stuff because it was quite early. Oh my good golly gosh, surprised the King Prince Charles. What is it, hun? asked Camilla. Did I remember to invite the Prime Minister? Of course you did. Camilla just rolled her eyes because he was always doing this, um, forgetting things. I hate him anyway. No, not the new fake Prime Minister, King Prince Charles corrected her rightly. The People's Prime Minister, the PM of Hearts. Camilla took her turn to gasp then. <gasps> oh no, you'd better do it now. I love him. You love him? King Prince Charles looked wounded, like one of those lions or stags he loved shooting over the years. Ha ha ha, not like that, Camilla reassured him dishonestly. King Prince Charles got out his bejeweled solid gold iPhone that had originally belonged to Africa and started texting. And then it's got a, like a line break. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 dot. Buzz! Went the Prime Minister, went the People's Prime Minister's phone. Just a regular phone, because he was just a normal guy. He looked at the screen and read the words on it that were a text, which is why his phone had buzzed just then, because it was on silent but with vibrate on. Hi, mate, it read. It's me, King Prince Charles. Hope you're good. Today it's my coronation, and I just want you to be there so much because you're amazing. We all really like you and what you do. Could you come to the ceremony? It won't be the same without you. P.S. Bring a plus one. Bye. The People's Prime Minister smiled, smoothed his lovely whitish yellowy hair to a respectful spot style for the special day, and started sending a text of his own. Meanwhile, over in Westminster, Naomi Forrest, the former and much loved public darling of digital media culture sport and though no those are all of them digital media culture and sport did we ever find out what media was i never found out but i, I yeah um culture's the main one the the much loved public darling of digital media culture and sport was taking a luxurious bath with rose petals and oils and a lush bath bomb but not one of those glitter ones where you can't get the glitter off for days and it seemed like a nice idea at the time but it makes a right bloody best just a normal one that smelled nice her phone buzzed next to her on the edge of the bath 
She looked at the text on the screen that had been sent to her and squirmed with delight at who it was from. It was from the true Prime Minister himself, her king. No. No, wait, he didn't... Right, she didn't call the true PM her king. Edit that out. She... Edit that out. She properly does like and faithfully serve, um, without question, King Prince Charles, uh, the fictitious Naomi Forrest does, anyway, whoever she is. <laughs> any resemblances to anybody living and or dead is purely coincidental. But she, she didn't call him king. She didn't think of him as her king because King Prince Charles is king. But it was from the true prime minister. Okay. The text read, Naomi, I've been invited to Big Coro. What a turn up for the books. Bet you can't believe it, seeing as I essentially disappeared after I was being investigated by the committee because they're all jealous little snakes who can't stand how popular I am. Lol, that's what he texts. Anyway, I'm flying back from the five-star holiday destination I am at to be there for the ceremony and there's only one legend I want by my side. Naomi squealed with pleasure like a hot little pig and simply sent back one word. See you there, kiss. She was going to be the belle of this ball and no mistake. So there you go, an exclusive from my book, His French Bench Woman, now available in the works for 99p. Firstly, are you OK? I hope so. I'm Nadine Dorries, the People's Culture Secretary, celebrated authoress and now former MP of the constituency I have selflessly represented and served since 2005, my beloved constituency of... Stop all the clocks. Cut up the television. Prevent your dog from doing that. He was my north and south, my right, my left, my uh, something else. Anyway, um, I thought love would last forever. I was wrong. Famous poem that is very revenant today by J.R. Hartley. I'm here to read you a new section from my best-selling novel, His Front Bench Woman, now free on the front of You magazine. Chapter 37, The King is Dead. No, not that one, and no, not like that. Political heavyweight and glamorous icon Naomi Forrest was, for the first time, emotional like a baby. Tears flowed from her eyes like Niagara Falls, the mythical waterfall where Merlin lived in the old days. You can't go, oh captain, my captain. She beat her fists against the former, for now, Prime Minister's strong blonde chest. You have so much still to archive. Sorry, achieve. So much still to achieve. Sorry, I'm just so emotional, babes. Then the Prime Minister spoke. For now, my loyal and very capable and ravishing colleague and most trusted condiment, I must stand down, he said firmly with a voice that was both distinguished and erotic. Then I shall too! Naomi puffed out her chest like one of those weird birds on a Life on Earth documentary from that snake traitor channel BBC. But when she did it, it looked noble and also sexy and classy. I shall resign as an MP, whatever that is. Naomi, no! Her Prime Minister exclamationed. Yes, you must take my beautiful MP seat of... And what What's more, I'll have your baby. My what? Your baby? I'll have it. I'll do anything. I'll do anything for you, big dog. What? That's impossible. Nonsense. The only thing standing in the way is science and physics. And what have they ever done for us? What even are they in this crazy goddamn world? Naomi, have you lost your mind? No, I haven't. I've never felt more sane. Our Prime Minister will reign supreme once more, or my name's not Nadine Dorit Naomi Forrest. And I will be a lord. You mark my worms.